Hey, you guys, welcome back to part two of the BMA series, Black Male Accountability. So today's episode, we will be discussing promotion. But real quick, before we get into that, I want to give two black owned shout outs. So the first shout out I want to give is a personal favorite of mine. The Talia Wajid hair care line is something that I live by. Now, I just have the the one that I have posted up on the screen. I want to try the apple and aloe line next, but I'm going to be looking right now. I still I'm stocked up on hair products right now, so I don't need any. And then I have somebody actually finna send me some hair products. So I'm going to hold off on getting that now. But when I tell y'all Talia Wajid, it works amazing. I have type four hair. So, you know, the hair that the community hates. <laughs> uh, but no, for real, I have type four hair and it works really well for my hair. A little type three mixed up in there somewhere. But um, yeah, Talia Wajid is a great, she is a whiz when it comes to this stuff. And unlike most natural hair care, I don't want to say most. But most black owned products in general, let me not just, you know, generalize, generalize it to hair care, but a lot of black owned companies, because we try to go the organic route or the natural route, the same way it's going to cost you $1.25 for a bottle of Coke in the store, but, you know, three or $4 for a bottle of kombucha because it's organic. Um, a lot of black owned stuff is going to be higher, you know what I'm saying, in price. However, with Talia Wajid stuff, it's literally like six, seven, eight dollars. Like, it, she does not charge that much for her products. Now, as you, different lines may have different prices, but the standard line that I have, the first line that I tried out, it was literally like $7 a product. And that's very good for natural hair care. So that's our first shout out. Our next shout out is going to be Melanin Apparel. And they are, of course, a clothing brand. And they have a lot of cute little um, t-shirts and stuff. This one says stay woke. This one says stand up for right for what's right. And it has a picture of Kaepernick on it, kneeling. Um, this one says legalize being black. Very black, very proud. Stop killing black people, which is sad that we have to put that on a t-shirt. Um, yeah, these are real cute. I like these. They have one that says melanin. I use no chemicals, only juice and berries. <laughs> Keep your heart three stacks. Keep your heart. Brown skin is not a crime. Y'all, so these shirts, they really, really cute. I like them. Um, most of the shirts was 28, around 28. So it's about the same as Fashion Nova. So, you know, all my Fashion Nova heads, y'all may as well go and support them. Because odds are they got some of their designs from the site anyways. <laughs> no shade. But at any rate. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. I just wanted to give those two companies a shout out. Um, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do that every video, but I think with the climate we're in right now, it's good to shout out black owned companies and give alternatives for black people and people who claim to be allies to support. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right. So the last video of BMA, we spoke about promotion as one of the areas where we lack as far as promoting our women effectively. And when I say our women, I'm talking about unambiguous black women. Now, I wanna make it clear. I understand that we are living in a white man's world. So the white men who are in power control the media overall. However, some of these people on here had the chance to showcase black women, unambiguous black women in the right light and still didn't do it. And some of them did. And we'll get into who did and who didn't. You know, we're not just going to talk about the incorrect. We're going to talk about the correct as well. In fact, we're going to start on the correct. You know what I'm saying? Start off on a good note. So also another thing I want to note, this is not about morality. So the videos may be a little sexual. They might be a little risque. We're not here to discuss the morality of the videos. It is based solely on the fact that there are unambiguous black skinned women present in the commercial video tv show whatever it is all right so now that we got out of the way got that out the way i don't need nobody in the comments talking about some oh but it wasn't a good look i understand it may not be the best look but we are talking about the fact that there are black women undeniably black women brown skin and dark skin for the most part present in these music videos tv shows etc cetera, etc cetera. so now that i have made that clear let's go ahead and go into the first one off on the list all right, so the first one up is Normani's Videos Waves, the beautiful, talented, oh-so-classy Normani. 
Will you please have my kids? Let me relax. That was too much. But for real, y'all, Normani featuring Six Lack. And I, yeah, I know his name is Black, but if he wanted to be called that, he should have named himself that. So Six Lack, I said it. Get mad. <laughs> but yes, Normani and Way, uh, Normani's Ways video. Beautiful imagery, beautiful video. I love what they did with the green screen. And on top of that, it is her and four other black women, undeniably black women, alongside her um dancing looking feminine the energy is good the video is very calm very um who do i say it? it's just a calming video to watch so it's a little sexy not i don't want to say sexual or sexy but there's a little you know little you know she's dressed a little sexy but it's still tasteful you know what I'm saying? So, next up, nowhere near as sexual as motivation. <laughs> so, with that being said, the song next up would be Partisan Fontaine featuring City Girls and their song Peach. Now, remember what I said earlier. It doesn't matter if the video is sexual. We are talking about the fact that there are black women, undeniably black and brown women in the video. And also, I understand black women... Um, feel some way, some, not all, but I know in the black sector of YouTube, they have talked about their representation as far as there are more than just big obese or bigger black women in the black community. And they don't showcase us that enough. And I understand you and I agree with you. But here we are just talking about the fact that you can look at these ladies and say, yep, she's black. So with that being said, um, and one thing that I also want to know is I thought it was pretty funny. He had two little skinny white girls following him around in the video, trying to like stalk him, get up in the mansion and fuck him. I thought that was funny. And I thought that was a little jab at, um, a little funny jab to all the pro IR propaganda that we keeps getting shoved down our throats. And also, you know, I thought it was funny that, you know, those are the same white girls that some of you niggas glorify, but you know, we ain't going to talk about that on another day <laughs> and we will, we will, we will cover interracial dating. Um, and the glamorization of it. But with that being said, next video is Act Up. Remember what I said, ain't it about morality? I know the song is vulgar. We're just talking about the fact that there are undeniable black and brown women in the video. After that would be Twerk, featuring or City Girls featuring Cardi B. Again, same thing. Vulgar, yes. But at the same time, these are black women. You know they're black women. And shout out to the girl that got her, um, what is it? Did she got her tuition paid or something? Like, whoever won the count contest, the uh, number one. I know they gave out like a cash prize or something. So shout out to her. Um, next up is Cardi B, Cardi, <laughs> Cardi B and Bruno Mars, Please Me. Now I understand, again, this may be controversial. A lot of y'all feel like those two people are a part of the erasure of black people within um, mainstream media. I understand that. But Cardi B had one little maybe Latina mixed girl and the rest were undeniable black women. So that is why I'm highlighting that video. Next up would be the show, The Bachelorette with the oh so beautiful Miss Rachel Lindsay. And um, me and my neighbor, we watched this show and spoke about it, held kind of conversations. And I understand a lot of black men were upset at the IR propaganda. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to take black men seriously on interracial outrage because y'all don't keep the same energy for your men or your brothers. You don't keep the same energy for your peers, your brothers, none of that shit. They can come out and not only date interracially, but diss black women and y'all don't say shit. So I'm not really going to take that shit seriously until I start seeing the same amount of outrage when y'all put y'all or see y'all putting y'all brothers to task when they come out and diss black women give it another week or two it'll happen again somebody else somebody else get thrown in a trash can or hit with a skateboard let me see y'all talk about that then have the same energy for that instead of um the whole you know interracial dating and all this shit even though half of y'all niggas is doing it even though most of these hoteps online is dating interracial but y'all don't seem to want to talk about that so i'm not really one for the I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to hear that shit. We'll jump on interracial dating in another series or in another part of the series. At any rate, going back to Rachel Lindsay, beautiful black woman. She is the love interest. They are competing for her. She is the prize of the show. So overall, interracial dating aside, I like 
the show. I liked the show. And you know what I'm saying? Some of the black men, although most of them were arrogant, I did like a couple of them. Now, as far as Kenny was concerned, I'm sorry, Kenny, but I don't do baby kids. And I don't believe baby parents should be dating people without baby parents. I think it makes sense that if you have a child, you should pursue somebody who already had a child out of another relationship. And that way, if y'all want to have kids, good. And if you don't, y'all have already got two kids of your own. Boom. Right there. It makes sense. And I don't get men fighting that because women don't want to date men with kids any more than men want to date women with kids. In fact, y'all will call women tainted after they have kids. So I don't understand that. But nonetheless, um, just stupid fights to have back and forth on social media. Date who you want to date, be with who you want to be with. You don't always got to vocalize the shit. But at any rate, um, no baby kids, no baby kids. So I'm glad she didn't pick Kenny. I'm sorry. I did like Kenny, but the, I, the, the child, it was a child for me. As far as Eric was concerned, their chemistry always seemed more playful. Like, you know, they, they might have fucked. They, they might have fucked. You know what I'm saying? Because the way she was looking at him they, they, in one of them scenes, they might have fucked. You know what I'm saying? And they might have been good friends with benefits. But he, he just didn't look really ready to be married. And he was a bit more younger. You know, not saying that, you know, there aren't 28-year-olds who know what they want. But because I believe he was 28 at the time of taping. Um, but I, I was hoping for Eric, you know, if black love was going to come through, I was hoping it was going to be Eric, but you, she ended up with Brian and they did get married last year. Um, I just saw the picture when I was Googling and they look happy together. And at, at, at the end of the day, black people, whether you date out or date within the race, I just hope that you're happy. I hope that you're genuinely loved, not being fetishized, not being somebody's fuck of the day for however many next few months. I hope that you're genuinely happy. So with that being said, moving on from Rachel Lindsay. Next is Ari Lennox's video, Bust It. Now again, like I said, we're not talking about morality. We're just talking about the fact that there are brown skin women present. And everybody in that video is brown, black. Next up would be Sean Paul's Give Me the Light. Now you did have one little... Eh, I don't know, maybe on the light skin or lighter skin side woman. But other than that, they're pretty much unambiguous black women. And somebody said that Sean Paul is known for, you know, keeping black women in his videos. The unambiguous black women. Um, so with that being said, next up would be Normani Motivation. Now, remember, I said we didn't talk about morale. I know the video is very sexual, especially the basketball scene and, the, you know, drop it on his face. I understand that. <laughs> but... As far as representation, Normani, which most brown-skinned women do get it, and they tend to keep brown-skinned women in their videos. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, you'll have somebody pull some bull crap, like Kelly Rowland did with that crown video. And yes, I'm going to call her out because I also gave her a compliment on her coffee video later on. She's up on the list. She's a little few, um, a few videos down. But at any rate, next up is Brandy with the song Baby Mama. Now look, again. It's just about the fact that there are unambiguous black women present. And in that video, all the background, down, background dancers are brown women. So with that being said, next up is Solange's Cranes in the Sky. Oh my God, I see that the table is one of the best albums ever. I could listen to, I think I have almost every track on my phone. Let me go look. Put y'all on to some shit real quick. I told y'all on Twitter, y'all got to be able, don't be afraid to support black women's music. Tiana Taylor, I posted that about her album and she retweeted it. Um, Iman retweeted me too. I think I had said something about their um, Old Spice commercial. But um, yeah, I have almost every song on here. The only song I don't have, I think, is the song that she has with Lil Wayne. And I'm sorry, I just, I can't listen to colorists. <laughs> Especially colors who have dark skinned daughter, daughters, but you know, rap that that bitch would look better yellow. So at any rate, other than that, I think I have every song on um, her a, a, um, a Seat at the Table album. So with that being said, um, great musician, great musician. Tina and Matthew, Matthew, I don't know about his affairs and his marital skills, but as far as music, he and Tina was on it with Solange and Beyonce. Um, beautiful video, beautiful song. There you go. That's your morality video of the, this whole list <laughs> right there. <laughs> that one and the next one, which is Beyonce's Love Drought. Um, again, women of all shades are in there, but it's still majority brown women. You can tell they're black just by looking at them. The video is serene, it's nice, it's soft. And this one's not overly sexual, neither is Cranes in the Sky, so there you go right there. 
We got some morale up in there. Next up is Beyonce's Formation. We all remember Formation when it broke the internet. <laughs> but yeah, Formation, um, brown women of all shades, Afrocentric hairstyles. I really love that video. Like I went back and watched it the other day and I just commented black as fuck with a period and wrote a heart emoji. Like the video, I just love the video. Oh my God, I have my feelings on some stuff that Beyonce and Jay-Z have done as of late. More so Jay-Z. But she's with him, so she kind of gets roped in there. That's what happens when you're a couple. Um, and also some other stuff that I found out about them. But she did that formation. Next up is Kelly Rowland's Coffee. Beautiful video. Beautiful women. I don't even too much know. Like, I mean, I don't know the lyrics enough to know what the song is talking about. Because I just listened to it the one time. And I just couldn't stop looking at the video. I was like, this is so beautiful. I wasn't even focused on the words. But I'm going to put the song back on my phone, listen to it, and figure out what the fuck it's about. <laughs> I'm assuming it's about brown skin and loving it. So I'm assuming, but I'm going to go listen to it. But the video itself, the visual, is amazing. Um, and shout out to Beyonce for sharing that on her program. Um, Beyonce and Solange are very good at promoting women of all shades, in particular brown skin and dark skin women. And I like that about them. You can tell that Tina didn't raise them to think that, you know, their light skin made them superior. And I like that about them. So with that being said, next up is Lil' Kim, How Many Licks? The black Lil' Kim. Let me stop. Let me relax. I like Lil' Kim. Let me not do that. But um, for real, y'all, don't be talking about Lil' Kim, though, because um, I see a lot of people talking shit about her. And, and, and then in and of itself, y'all talk shit about dark-skinned women, and then when they go and pull a Lil' Kim, then y'all be mad. I don't understand. It's your talking that made them do that. The only difference between Lil' Kim and a lot of other black people, and since we're saying Lil' Kim, let me go ahead and throw in Vibes Cartel in that situation, because he bleached his skin too, but nobody seems to bring him up, and Michael Jackson, um, which I saw Michael Jackson do a video where he spoke about how his father used to talk about his black features. That shit was so fucking sad. But nonetheless, y'all don't seem to want to hold the men to the same tax. So I, I brought in two men. Since we're going to bring up Lil' Cam, I'll bring up two niggas. Vibes Cartel and Black Michael Jackson. Um, the only difference between those three people and a lot of black people is they have money. That's it. If you go in Jamaica, they are selling bleach soap or um, cake soap like hotcakes. Literally. It's, it, they will tell you that they... And that's one thing that I can give Jamaica over black Americans. They'll be more honest with it. Now, they are... When you see them speak about it, or when, from the footage I've seen, you've seen them talk about it like it's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So there's some delusion there. Like, that's not a good thing to want to wipe off the blackness of your skin. But at least they're open and honest about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, little Kim, how many licks? Black women are there. It's present. You can see them. Next up is the Ford commercial. Um... This one is new. I don't know how new the commercial is. Do I still have the search tab up? I can find it. Okay, I can't find it. At first when I saw it, because I saw it on Chrissy's video, I haven't watched or didn't watch it yet, but I did watch it when I looked it up because there was a link to a video on the site with it or a, a video. There was a link to a site with the video on it. And um, at first I thought she had a broom. So I was like, hold up, Chrissy, why are you posting this? But it turns out um, she just walked over, had a microphone, put it up to the engine, and then it room. And it was about the Mustang GT. Nice video. That yellow on black, the yellow car with her black dress, they knew what they was doing with the color schemes. I like that. But with that being said, um, my only critique of the video is I like to see, if they're going to get dark-skinned women, I prefer them to get dark-skinned women with hair. And uh, nothing wrong with the TWAs, the teeny weeny afros, or the bald women. Nothing wrong with it, but I prefer long hair. Maybe that's a little European of me to say. I'm sorry. But uh, as somebody who's trying to grow my hair out, and I have the type of hair that they say that women can't grow, like, I have type 4 hair. There's some type 3 in there somewhere, um, different strands, but it's overall type 4. So I have the hair that they say black women can't grow. So I, I prefer, if it's dark-skinned women, to see a dark-skinned woman with hair. That's just me personally. But she still looks beautiful. She looks feminine. The dress is nice. She's got on her nice heels. They don't have her looking toe up, makeup on point, all that shit. She looked good. So now that we have gone through all the corrective promotion, let's go through the incorrect promotion. All right. So first up, we have Zoe Zaldana as Nina Simone. That should go without saying why that was wrong. And you actually had black people defending this. 
I was, mm, I was living, reading some of them damn comments. I was, I was. Um, and for the men who don't get why this is wrong, the black men, uh, let's go back to the whole John Henry situation where they wanted to get The Rock to play John Henry, even though he's, it, it, to my knowledge, he's been depicted in the past as a dark-skinned black man. So it's funny how y'all can understand colorism when it's affecting you, but you don't understand it when it affects your women, or you don't care. That's really it. Y'all understand it. You just don't care. Um, but yeah, Zoe Zaldana, Anita Simone, and um, she better not be posting no Black Lives Matter shit. She just need to be quiet after that bullshit she did. The fact that you actually went and blackfaced your ass. But like I told y'all, I don't expect mixed people to get it right because they're not black. They're mixed. Their experiences are different from ours, especially Zoe Zaldana. Look at her phenotype. She's not going to go through the same shit as black women. Um, now that's not me excusing her behavior and what the fuck she did. Cause she knew what the fuck she was doing. So at any rate, next up, Bryson Tiller, something new. Now, this one does have quite a bit of brown skinned women. However, the key words are unambiguous black women. These women are obviously maybe from like Ethiopia or somewhere where the features are a little more less in your face black. So that is my reasoning for picking that. I'll give him a half a point. I'll give him a half point. All right? So I won't give him, I, I won't give him an A for effort, but I'll give him a half a point. So I give him a 50 for that. The rest of these people pretty much getting straight up zeros. But I give him a 50 for that. Next up would be The Game Dating Show. Then next up, we also have Flavor Flav's Dating Show. Then next up, we also have Ray J's Dating Show. Now, obviously, all these men that dated white, bright light, and anything next, and um, we. So I'm I'm not expecting much, and and don't get me wrong, I don't understand much or expect much from these black celebrity entertainers, male or female, because just because, like I said, just because somebody's black, I don't expect them to necessarily have the same plight as everybody else. I don't think that all black people are pro-black. Sad, but it's true. So, with that being said, they had a chance. They picked those women. Trust and believe they'll pick, they have a choice in what shows up as eligibility or eligible women to date them. And for the most part, it was white, light, and bright. You had a few brown skins here and there. No dark skins, but you did have a few brown skins. Safe browns. Um, next up is the IKEA commercial. And this promotion is like in your face disrespectful if you don't see it you just don't want to see it so what happened on this commercial and i do remember watching chrissy's video on this and i want to say i spoke on it in the past i cannot remember for sure if i made a video on it um some of these things i have spoke on some of them i have not but with that being said um it basically shows a white couple and then i am um, what is perceived to be maybe a latino mexican white mexican white latina couple and then next you have the black woman going to sleep by herself in a bed so they're they're again re, um, re, reiterating that nobody wants black women, and on top of that, she's the unambiguous black woman. They they didn't grab a light bright for this commercial. So and whether or not they grabbed a light bright would have been slapping the face to me. It would have made this list regardless. But the fact that they knew to get an unambiguous black woman for that, it tells you these companies know what the fuck they're doing with this promotion. They put millions behind these commercials. They put money behind this shit. They know what they're doing. So don't excuse them. We know what's up. Next up would be Amara La Negra. What a bam bam. I like the song. When the video came out, I was disappointed. For somebody who literally got colorism conversations like really, really sparking. Um, not in just a Latin America, but also in the black community. You know what I'm saying? With her crossover to on Love and Hip Hop. Um... I was rooting for Amara, and she has let me down a few times. Uh, this video, um, and then also the Gina Rodriguez situation. So, now there has been some situations, like she had that, that um, interview with that hating ass coon nigga, I don't know who his name is, but he told her she shouldn't want to refer to herself as Afro-Latina because there's bad stuff that comes with Africa, or African, when you do that, or Afro in general. So, um, and she stood up for, you know what I'm saying? She didn't necessarily like fight him down on it, but she definitely gave him the vibe that what you're saying is not okay. So I'll give her that. But this video for somebody who fought and said, you know, 
uh, made it a point to say Latinos that look like me don't get representation and all this stuff. Once she had the chance, excuse me, to get some Latinos that look like her on these videos, she did not do that. You know what I'm saying? If I remember, if I recall correctly, it's been years since I watched it. I have not gone back and rewatched this. Some of these stuff I went back and rewatched hers. I just recently added it. I think yesterday I didn't have time to watch the video. Um, but all I remember is seeing the big breasted Latino women or Latin women that is culturally accepted as what is Latin looking. So with that being said, nice tits, but you know, Amar, you could have, fact, you could have got some Afro Latinas for that. So next up would be Wale's Black Bonnie. Now I know some of y'all are confused because this is definitely a unambiguous black woman, but there also needs to be context within the promotion. The context of the promotion is important. You know what I'm saying? Just like some of y'all may feel like a lot of the correct examples I brought up were a bit overtly sexual and y'all are entitled to feel that way. And I understand you. I'm not disagreeing with you. But within the whole Black Bonnie video of Wale's, um, the black woman is, you know, the strong, independent type. You know what I'm saying? She's up here fighting with him. And I told y'all about having women on the front lines with y'all. It is not a good look. So for that reason, that is why this video made the list of incorrect promotion. She's pretty. Don't get me wrong. She's a beautiful woman. Nice um, afro and all that shit. Video looked good. But I just, for somebody who's spoken about colorism in the past, obviously through the men's lens of only a black man from Africa, um, I, I would have expected him to do better. You know what I'm saying? Which is these, these incorrect, which is a part of the um, half-ass colorism combos that I bought up in last um, video series. Or in the last um, video of the series. So with that being said, great woman, beautiful woman, wrong type of representation though. If anything, it should have been black clad and you know she should have been, I don't know, at home doing more traditionally feminine stuff. And don't get me wrong, when I say this stuff, like, I am not anti-feminist or anything like that, but our women need to be able to have the choice to choose if they want to be damsels in distress or be out on the street marching for you niggas. That's my point in saying more traditional feminine stuff. So um, with that being said, next up is both of the Dove commercials. So first part, you got the one where... Um, you have the black woman in the dirty or the before, which is perceived to be dirty. Again, these companies know what the fuck they're doing when they, they put millions behind these companies' ads. They know what they're doing. They see the racial tensions that are going on in the world. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. So they put the black woman on the before side and the white woman on the after side. And pretty much the same aspect they did here with the black woman taking off her shirt and um, then it's revealed to be a white woman on the clean side. So, and Dove just gets it all the way wrong. They're actually, are they on here again? They sponsored Kelly Rowland's crown video that I brought up earlier. Or I think that was a project or a collaboration in between the two of them. So Dove really just doesn't get black people at all. <laughs> and that's okay. I won't be supporting them. So with that being said, um, next video is Drake's Nice For What. So in this particular video, I don't remember all the women, but I know you had Tiffany Haddish. I know you had Issa Rae. And then you had um, the little girl, little cute girl. She's a little, a little like a stud, but she's still cute on the cute side. Um, so you had the representation there, but again, it wasn't the proper representation. And again, because I look at Drake as a biracial, just like I look at Zoe Zaldana as a biracial, I don't expect them to get it 100% right. I don't expect black people 100% phenotypically black people to get it right. These black male rappers have light and bright all throughout their videos. So again, not trying to place, place the pro-black agenda on these artists. I'm just saying, I'm pointing out the people who got it wrong and the people who got it right. Um, but yeah, in this video, Issa Rae, she's, um, as far as the features go, you could still argue that part as far as unambiguity. But, I mean, she, she's obviously a black woman if you look at her. So um, we won't nitpick that far with the features. We'll just go by color or skin tone. Um, now, I did that in the Bryce Tiller video, but that's because you didn't have any wide-nosed black women in there. 
You know what I'm saying? But as far as this one is concerned, you do have them there. It's just Issa Rae. She's yelling at the white man, a.k.a. the angry black woman. Then you have Tiffany Haddish smoking a cigar in a bathtub. Um, being herself, you know, we all know Tiffany, Tiffany Radish is a little ratchet. I know some black people feel like she's doing too much. But nonetheless, there's the ratchet black woman and smoking a cigar, not really feminine. Then you have the cute little stud. I still don't know her name. And that's it as far as unambiguous black women. Yes, Tracy Ross and Yara Shahidi are there, but they are mixed women. They are not black. Mixed with black, yes, but they are not black. They do not get treated the same as unambiguous black women. Yara Shahidi, maybe a little bit more. But still, to me, she looks like you could look at her and see there's a little something more there. Just me personally. But at any rate, um, next up, Meek Mills and Tory Lane's video, Liddy. This one is real quick. There was not even one black woman in the video. I don't even think there was one mixed black woman in the video. Or, or mixed with a black woman. Um, next up is an artist named, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Jivion uh, or Givion. I want to say Jivion. That sounds more nicer to me, but I'm not sure which one it is. He is a, a new R&B artist. Now, he does only have one video, so I'm not going to make it out like this is a pattern of him. Um, or he only has one video with a woman in it. The rest are him. So his song titled Like I Want You. Now, the song is beautiful. But on his arm and his love interest is a light, very light, bright, biracial woman. And that was my point for putting him in there. Now, then again, he's a new artist. So I'm not saying this is like a pattern he'll continue. We'll have to wait to see as he gets bigger what he does. But um, yeah, that's his song, Like I Want You. Next up is Tyler Perry. And I hope this... Pick a movie. Pick a movie. <laughs> Tyler Perry... Um, I think we can agree that a lot of his content, just like some of the movies growing up in the 90s and shows in the 90s growing up were funny, but let's keep it real. They didn't depict black people in the best light. And he does not depict black women in the best light. I, uh, I don't know if he got mommy issues. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, pick a movie. Still like my DM. It's still funny. And I can say that. It's, it's, it's funny, but the representation of black women within Tyler Perry movies is toxic. And um, just because somebody is black, that doesn't mean we have to automatically love what they're doing. No, we can critique everybody else just like them. So, or critique them just like everybody else, sorry. But next up is Norbit. Um, I think that goes without saying. Respucia, like, let's keep that real. Um, next up would be Martin Lawrence with not only the character Shanene, but um, Pam as well. You know, he's always picking at her naps, um, calling her nappy head, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, kitchen in the back. You know, it's always like little anti-black rhetoric. And I understand he's a comedian, but maybe that's the part of comedian or com comedy that we need to eradicate. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you're pro-black, you're anti-black, anything that's anti-black. So um, I understand, you know what I'm saying? It was funny. We laughed at it, looked at it. I'm not trying to fuck up your childhood, but at the end of the day... That wasn't a good look for unambiguous black women. Next up would be Martin Lawrence again with Big Mama. Um, the mammy archetype, you know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. Video or the movie was funny. Movies, because I think he had a part two. Um, that, they were funny, but still not a good look. Um, next up would be Jamie Foxx with his character Wanda. And I do understand that Jamie Foxx has done other characters, on his show, he done a, he did a lot of their characters. I started watching his show last year, 2019. I went back and watched all the older shows. And, oh, I can bring up another one. Um, In the House with um, LL Cool J. You know what I'm saying? Kim Wayans, talented woman. But her character on there, I believe her name is Kim. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, <laughs> or I hope I'm thinking of the right actress. But talented lady, beautiful woman. But her character on there, again, not a good look. Playing into the dark-skinned woman that will always have that unrequited love. Um, and we've seen this trope time and time again. A Dijonet on The Proud Family. Um, pick, a, pick a show. Pick a show, really. And I'm finding that a lot of the shows that we watched have a lot of hidden colorism within them. And, you know, back then, they may not have known how to depict it or name it. But now we know better, so we need to do better. That is my point. 
But yeah, Jamie Foxx, Wanda, you know, all those people I just listed. And last, but definitely not least, is the influencer Blame It On K-Way. Now, I ain't gonna lie. When I first saw him on Vine, back in the Vine days, if y'all remember Vine, I know I'm old, child. <laughs> but yeah, back in back on Vine days, I used to laugh at his videos, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, once I knew better, I, 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 I did better. And the point of these promotions needing to be effective is this is this trickles into how black people are seen in the world. Whether or not y'all want to admit it or believe it, it trickles into how they see us. The same way the thug rapper mentality, or not mentality, but image, trickles into the black men that are being killed at the hands of police brutality. Uh, my bad. Cold-blooded murder. We're not calling it that on my channel. Um, but... That trickles into that. Not saying that if rap was never invented, black people wouldn't be killed. I'm not saying that at all. So don't don't be dramatic in the comments. But with that being said, like you will get blocked. <laughs> but with that being said, it trickles into how we are viewed, how we are perceived. Um, shows like Love and Hip Hop don't help that. Basketball wise, that doesn't help loving. Uh, um, that doesn't help black women. Love and Hip Hop doesn't help black women or us. You know what I'm saying? People are more apt to want to hold women up as these statues of morality. But still, you know, you got men on Love & Hip Hop with 8, 9, 11, 10 kids. And they married not now one of them baby mamas. You know what I'm saying? So that's not that's not a good look. Um, you know what I'm saying? Rappers like Future, Rick Ross, fill in the blank, really anybody. <laughs> but... um. You know what I'm saying? Even down to how trivial, you know what I'm saying? It could be trivial things. Like, I know y'all have noticed, and, and we've had these discussions on Twitter before, um, porn. Even the porn industry can be very racially charged. Some of the titles they be posting on the videos and shit, and maybe we'll get into that on one of these segments um, of black male accountability. We can get into that and the effects that that has on our people and how other people see us, too. Um, in fact, probably we will do a video on that. I just know when I get partner on youtube they are not going to monetize that oh my god <laughs> y'all please go hit up that paypal and that um venmo so at any rate with that being said um i will leave y'all off on yeah i will leave y'all off on everything i just stated here um, I hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know some more. If you have any correct promotions, let me know down below or any incorrect promotions. What did you think overall of this topic? And let me know if there's anything else y'all want me to speak on. I do have a list of topics that I'm going to touch on. But if there's anything y'all want me to touch on or, you know, if another video pops up with either correct, motion, cor correct promotion or incorrect pr promotion and y'all want me to do a review on it, y'all let me know down below. Excuse me. All right, y'all. We signing out. Be black. Do better. Be a man about your shit. Um, I don't really have no little farewell speech ready for these damn uh, videos um, or for this segment. But, um, yeah, be black, do better, all that shit. <laughs> and I'll catch y'all on the next um, part of the series. Peace out.